Oh, I'm live. Okay. I was reading some notification. YouTube was giving me. All right, let's see here. How are we going to do this? All right, I guess I should uh, give you all an update. So if you've seen my YouTube channel before and you used to watch all my videos, you're probably like, what happened to Mike Barden? That guy hasn't made a YouTube video in forever. Is he still alive? Is he in jail? What happened to him? He was in Arizona. His house is being shot at. People were following him around breaking in, staged car accidents, all kinds of different stuff. And uh, all of that was going on. I was in Maricopa County in Avondale, Arizona for nine years. And uh, on 11-11 of 2017, I started documenting and reporting uh, the stuff that I go through being targeted being on a, uh, a government watch list. And it was pretty wild for a long time. Hey, Truth Serum, how you doing? And uh, I was making progress. I was making friends with uh, the people in the neighborhood. Things were getting better. For the, for the most part, I was still struggling financially. But, uh, you know, my son had moved out, moved to Minnesota, just my daughter and I in the house. And uh, she, actually, she ended up moving out with her boyfriend. And it was just me and the dog in this 3,050 square foot house that uh, it was just just too much, you know, bills were about $4,500 a month. And, you know, I was just, I was there by myself and, and I was still getting relentlessly stalked and harassed. There were some neighbors uh, down at 814, I call them 814. Uh, they were true domestic terrorists. They were literally in my front yard every day, revving up motorbikes and, and calling the police on me, trying to lure me off the property to, to get me in a fight so they could shoot me and all, it, it was nonsense. And uh, other than them, actually, most of the neighbors uh, had learned what it really was not what came up on their community police report or whatever their thing is that they get. And um, I'd actually, you know, ended up having some real friends there. But these people at 814, they had some kind of connection with the police there. You know, it's most of that area is bought off by the Sinaloa cartel, including the politicians like Katie Hobbs. That's, in my opinion, that's not a fact. Uh, that's my opinion. But, long story short, I had a, what they call a living estate sale. And I just sold everything that I had that wouldn't fit in my 20-foot trailer. Kept my tools I needed. And it's kind of hard to see. That's my 20-foot trailer out there. It's parked in the driveway right now. Um, but I had a piece of property that I would talk about. Some of you have heard me talk about it before. I bought this property about four years ago in South Charleston in a place called Davis Creek. And there was two structures on that property. It was on the side of a hill that, it, it seems like a 45 degree angle. It, I had somebody come out to look at the uh, area to see if they could put a tough shed up there. So I was gonna make like a little tiny home. And they wouldn't even deliver it. The lady was like, uh, I'm sorry, sir. You have probably the steepest driveway in West Virginia. We can't even get that thing up there. Um, it wasn't paved. The house, both house, the, the one at the bottom of the property needs to completely be knocked down to the foundation, which was made out of like old tires and uh, pieces of concrete, just stuff like that. 
And uh, I tried. I tried. I worked on that property for two months. The dog and I were living in uh, the parking lot in the trailer. This thing's lagging now. We were living in the parking lot down the street. Uh, some of the neighbors that own a business were nice enough to let us stay in the parking lot. And uh, we didn't have electricity all the time. Of course, this thing is lagging. Why wouldn't it be? Come on. Anyway, money or have enough time to, uh, to get that property ready by the time that it got cold. And I needed to do something. And long story short, here, let's see if I can go outside and get a better signal here. I don't think it has anything to do with my signal, but try. Long story short, phone calls, made a couple moves, and I ended up buying a house. I own it. It's mine. I have the deed. I got the deed. June 5th, but let's see, let's see if I can turn this around, there we go, it's my house, this is built in 1921, it's 102 years old, it's got sandstone foundation, brick, plaster and lath on the inside. Uh, it's two stories, it's like 1,400 square feet downstairs, and uh, it's got a big master ba uh, bedroom and bathroom upstairs. It's got a driveway that I can park my trailer and my truck, which here in Charleston, West Virginia, if you have a driveway, you're doing all right. Uh, most of the people here have to park on the street. Uh, especially over here on the west side, which when I got here when I was over in South Charleston uh, People were like don't go to the west side. It's crazy. That's the craziest part of town That's where it's the hood. It's the you know all this and that and I was like Bet I could uh, afford a house over there. So I went and checked it out And there's the most beautiful architecture over here This uh, actually here look at this is my garage right here these doors roll along the sides to open up solid wood. Everything on this house is nice, heavy, old growth, solid wood. And that right there is the apartment. It's a one bedroom apartment that's above the, uh, the garage here. So me and my girlfriend, yeah. Oh, and I got a girlfriend too. Uh, so I got a house. I have a girlfriend. I got a job with a construction company and we do remodeling on houses from anything from the foundation up including electrical and plumbing and uh, we do some landscaping too which is why I got hired the guy was like hey I see you do you know landscaping that's you know not my strong suit I need somebody who can do that and then help me with these other jobs and I was like I need a job uh, I was about out of money I'm, I'm always just about out of money anyway uh, so I made it here. Why is this thing lagging, huh? Weird. But yeah, I made it here to Charleston, West Virginia. And um, I already know all my neighbors. Uh, we got invited to family reunion. The neighbors across the street invited us to a family reunion. Oh, know that dude? Hey, whoa! Hey, how you doing, Good, buddy. How you doing? All right, all right. Good. Um, yeah, that's my that's my neighbor. Whoa, he's cool. Video? Uh, I'm on YouTube right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been on here for like I don't know six, seven months, so I'm letting everybody know I'm still alive. Uh, I, 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 um, but yeah. This is the neighborhood. That's the side 
of my house over here where uh, there used to be a house and it burned down so we just have like a big yard on the side pretty much that I don't own that property over there but uh anyway look at this beautiful porch I sit on there and play my ukulele here I'll, I'll take you guys around the side here beautiful neighborhood and just on the other side of those houses right there is the Kanawha River so we take the dog walk over to the river go for walks along it's a giant river too uh, we go along the uh, the river watch the, uh, the paddle boats and uh, enjoy the beautiful weather which in Phoenix it's still like a hundred now here it's probably 75 today but uh yeah you see there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this house but I'm doing it somebody there was ivy all the way up this wall somebody cut it down at the bottom so now it's just a bunch of dry ivy stuck to the wall Uh, but this is the apartment, and I actually had a renter in this apartment when I got here. I inherited the renter with the uh, with the property, and I was happy about that actually at first. He was three hundred, which actually isn't that uncommon like this. It's things are very affordable here. I don't want to say how much I paid for this house, but you probably wouldn't even believe me if I told you. Um, oh, the dog, it's Willis, because not everybody knows his name. Yeah, Willis is down there taking a nap. girlfriend. You don't need to know her name. Uh, yeah, this is the, uh, it's like a studio apartment up here. And anyway. The, uh, the renter that was up here seemed okay at first, and then he started having these psychotic breaks. I don't know if he was a TI, what was going on, but he was telling me that um, I was placing cameras in his house and poisoning his water, and he told me there were dead people underneath the house, and uh, he needed to dig it up, and he threatened to kill me. So, long story short, he went, it was some street theater stuff, he, uh, he went on a psych hold twice, and then once I got a... Uh, a restraining order on him he violated that the day that I got the restraining order and then he went to jail and I'm pretty sure he's still there he was in prison for like seven eight years something like that um, so he had to go I uh, can't have people on the that are renters threatening to kill me and telling me that I'm making too much noise uh, doing construction to try to remodel his apartment or clean up outside but this place was absolutely destroyed I had, uh, let's see if I flip this around, it's weird, this thing keeps lagging but when I flip the camera, anyway, I took, I had rented a giant dump truck and I took three loads to the landfill uh, from the downstairs part, there were bed bugs and cockroaches, a uh, hundred years of cigarette smoke and who knows what. I've been scrubbing walls, uh, peeling up. This this place has the original hardwood floors that they installed 102 years ago. I don't know if it's um, what what walnut or oak or what, but it's beautiful hardwood floors that I'm going to sand and I'm going to refinish. Uh, but since this was a rental in what was a very terrible neighborhood for a long time fentanyl crack you name it uh, was going on over here murders all the time uh, they they just came in and they would slap paint on this place to get it ready um, put these little sticky linoleum tiles uh, they would layer carpet on the other carpet so I pulled up two layers of carpet and two layers of these sticky linoleum things downstairs or my girlfriend and I did, she helped me. 
and that took a long time and a lot of work and every extra penny that I had. So we got the, the downstairs livable. It's not finished yet, but the kit we the kitchen is is usable. Uh, there's still a few mice that burn around when they get in the house. Uh, we had a possum get in the house the other night. Uh, my dog thought it was like an ugly cat or something like that. Didn't even bark at it. And then the possum started going rah, rah, like it, hissing at us. Um, but uh, so we're, we're living down there now. And now that I have that to the point that we can live down there comfortably, it's not beautiful yet. Um, I need to start working on this apartment so I can get a renter in here and get some income coming in because I am barely scraping by still. Uh, even though it's, it's, it's hard to find work here. And now the company I work for, I don't work for them full time. I work when they have, when they have jobs and it's not all the time. Uh, I find my own side jobs. I'm still doing this. I cleared out two storage units uh, a couple weeks ago. Had some garage sales here. But I'm telling you, I have never been anywhere like this in my entire life. The poverty here is something like I've never seen. Uh, ever. And I've lived in California, Tennessee, Texas, Oklahoma, Maryland. Where else am I forgetting? Some, I've lived all over the United States. And... Uh, Charleston, West Virginia is it. These guys got just decimated. The coal industry was taken away. They had the, uh, the huge fentanyl epidemic and everybody just moved away. There's vacant houses everywhere here in Charleston. Uh, the people that live back in the, uh, the holler, the, 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 the divide here basically is the, the old money, the people that have a lot of money, old money, people that have a good job with the city or like some of the tech industries here, you know, car dealerships, whatever. If you find a job like that, you're living really good. If not, it is an everyday struggle and I see it everywhere. People are just struggling to survive here, you know, living off of bread. You know, they haven't had meat in years because, um, you know, they're just so broke and it's so hard to come by money here. And I've, I've felt that. It's been tough. But uh, anyway, this is what I'm working on today, the apartment. So I figured I would just do this live. One to update y'all that watch YouTube and... Uh, don't follow me on TikTok. I'm, I've been doing TikTok videos pretty regularly because it takes me, you know, 60 seconds to do a TikTok video. Actually, I did one a few days ago. They got like, it's at like 530,000 views. Um, oh, the senator here. I think uh, Manchin, I think you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, I'll tell you what, this, this place was a uh, Democrat. And I don't even really want to talk about politics politics too much but uh this place was democrat pretty much always they they hadn't voted a republican anybody in in uh i, I like 80 years or something like that but 76 percent of the people here in west virginia voted for trump and uh people call uh west virginians dumb hillbillies these people are not dumb these people are survivors. They know how to do a whole lot with a little. They're the friendliest people I've ever met in my life. Um, I still go through the uh, the organized stalking harassment thing. You know, it's no matter where you go in the United States, if there's a fusion center, there's community policing, and they're going to be sending people out the, to do stuff to you. But. Um, We'll just say they're a lot better at it in uh, like California and Arizona. Or maybe they're not, no, I shouldn't say they're better at it. Maybe this place, uh, they don't go after people with certain political leanings or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, everybody here loves Trump. A lot of hardworking good down-to-earth people that will actually stop and have a conversation with you. 
Uh, if you break down, they'll pull over and help you get to where you need to go or fix your car or whatever. And I think that's how these people have survived so long together by working with each other and being kind to each other. And I see that a lot here. Like I said, I've already made in, in Arizona. I, um, the, the neighbors in my neighborhood, it took me like five years before I even met anybody in my neighborhood. I would wave at people and they would just turn around and look the other way. They were rude and obnoxious, would not take two seconds to piss on you if you were on fire. Um, I, like I said, I did end up with some friends there that, that I really miss. I, I miss a few of my friends there. Um, but it's just a whole nother world here. This is, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just different. But I love West Virginia so much. It's, um, you know, I'm 48 years old now. And this is the first place that I've ever lived in my life, including where I was born and raised, that I feel at home. And I can't explain it. There's, there's something about this place, like when you cross the river, uh, the Canal River over here, there's three bridges in Charleston here that go across, so you're constantly going back and forth. You know, to go to Home Depot, I have to cross the river. Um, when you cross the ri river and you see all that water and all of the beautiful trees and the mountains, there's something that just, for me, there's something that touches my soul, and I, I can feel it. I can feel it in my soul, something that's alive and uh, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful here and there's something about this place that, that gets to me in a positive way and I definitely needed that. So I keep having to turn this camera around. Is it glitchy for you guys? Okay. Anyway, so this is the apartment. So this is the old original trim right here. And there's literally four layers of paint on this trim. But underneath is this beautiful hardwood. See, I'm getting to it. Uh, pulling staples out. They had to put uh, plastic over these windows for the uh, for the weather because they didn't have enough money to pay for electricity. Uh, so they use well, they would use that space heater over there. But it gets so cold here that they put blankets and uh, plastic over the windows to uh, to keep warm, and they just stapled it into this into this trim here. But. Uh, Everything in this house is original. I don't want to show you downstairs right now. Uh, the girlfriend wouldn't be too comfortable about that. Uh, she will just say that she's had a lot of the similar experiences that I've had and that's how we met. But I mean, look at that glass doorknobs. Got the original hardware that's just been painted over so many times. And there's literally four paints. There's like beige. Well, I don't think it would start out beige white with um, layers of years of smoke and then white under that and then blue and then green and uh, having to go through all of these layers it's uh it's been pretty daunting but when i get done it's going to be beautiful look at this the uh clawfoot tub the original clawfoot tub original medicine cabinet right there is where the old razors you would take your razor out and just put it in the back here this thing's probably full of old used razors 
or uh, blades. But anyway, I, I'm here. This is my home now. And I don't plan on going anywhere. That, not I don't plan on going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. The hell or high water, it doesn't matter. I am not leaving West Virginia. This, this is my home. If my family wants to uh, be around me, they're welcome to visit or move here. They should actually uh, come here and buy a house. You can pretty much sell your car and buy a house here at this point. But there are people moving here from all over the United States right now that uh, either got touched. There's a lot of people moving from... Well, actually, no, hold on, I take that back. I was about to say from California. I haven't met anybody from California, from Texas. Uh, just from all over the United States. I've met people that have, that have moved here. I talked to the insurance agent and I asked him, I said, is there an influx of people moving from out of state? And he was like, yeah, for the last, you know, five, six years, we've been losing 15 to 20 clients a month because everybody's just been hightailing out of, out of here because there's no work. Um, but he said for about the last six months to a year, they're getting five to 10 people moving in. And uh, I see it here on the west side. And I, when I say the west side got decimated, this place, you wake up on Sunday morning, you will not see one person on the street driving. Uh, Saturday, there's a couple people out driving around, but people are either, but yeah, it's just the vacant homes, abandoned homes, people just walk away from their house. These beautiful, why does this keep doing this? These, uh, these beautiful hundred year old homes, that, you know, I think it's because it takes, it takes a lot of work, you know. If you buy one that's pretty far gone, you're gonna be putting fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 into it to get it livable, not perfect, probably $100,000 into it to get it completely restored, uh, if you're paying contractors to do that. Um, I'm doing all mine myself after I get off work, so I mean, I'm, you know, I'm doing construction.